Hello. In this presentation, I'm going to look at the management of inventory. Inventory, or stock, refers to the raw materials input to a process, the finished goods that will be sold to customers, and work in progress whilst it is being transformed from one to the other. It is likely to be a significant value in both trading and manufacturing operations. Accordingly, it is important that inventory is managed carefully to ensure operational efficiency. Specifically, this presentation will cover the objectives of inventory management, elements of cost, the economic order quantity model, quantity discounts and just in time. Let's now look at each of these in turn. The Objectives of Inventory Management Management implies guiding or controlling activities towards the achievement of predetermined goals or objectives. Accordingly, before we can consider how inventory will be managed, it is necessary to clearly identify what we are trying to achieve. The objectives of inventory management are twofold. One, to avoid stock outs, and two, to minimize the costs associated with the purchasing, ordering, and holding of inventory. In order to achieve these aims, rather than thinking of inventory in total, as was the case in the working capital cycle presentation, we need to think about each individual item of inventory. Potentially, this will entail a tremendous amount of work, and in some cases, the time and effort required to manage an item may not be justified given the relatively low value of the stock item itself. Consequently, many firms will adopt an ABC system, whereby high-value items are designated as Category A and will be subject to rigorous scrutiny. Conversely, low-value Category C items have far fewer controls and may be available on free issue. Obviously, Category B falls in between. Elements of cost in simple terms, there are three categories of cost in relation to inventory. The buying or purchase cost, P, which refers to the cost of acquiring an item. In accordance with financial accounting standards, this will also include costs incurred in getting the item to its current location, for example, delivery costs. The total annual purchasing costs incurred will be P multiplied by D, where D is the annual demand. The cost of placing an order, CO, which includes all of the costs incurred in ordering inventory from a supplier. Though not exhaustive, these will include stationary, computer processing costs, postage costs, etc. The total annual ordering costs will be CO multiplied by the number of orders placed. The number of orders placed will be D divided by Q, where Q is the quantity ordered each time. Finally, the holding cost, CH, is the cost of holding one item for one year. This will include the costs associated with holding and moving an item around the facility and or the opportunity cost of having money tied up in inventory and therefore not available for other investment opportunities. The total annual holding cost will be CH multiplied by the average quantity held, i.e. Q divided by 2, 
where inventory is used at a constant rate. Similarly, the average quantity held will be Q divided by 2 plus B, where B is a buffer or minimum inventory level held. Economic order quantity. The economic order quantity, EOQ, is the quantity to order each time in order to minimise inventory costs and is given by the following formula. The square root of 2 multiplied by the cost of placing an order, CO, multiplied by the annual demand, D, divided by the cost of holding one item for one year, CH. You may notice that the purchase cost, P, does not appear in this formula. This is because the EOQ model ignores the possibility that quantity discounts may be available. Accordingly, whether you order one batch of 1,000 or 1,000 batches of one, the total purchase cost will be exactly the same and as such does not affect the decision. Other assumptions of the EOQ model are Inventory is used at a steady rate throughout the year and replenishment is instantaneous once the reorder point is reached. Or, perhaps more realistically, the lead time is consistent and can be predicted with accuracy. Quantity discounts. As discussed already, the EOQ model identifies the quantity to order in order to minimise inventory costs, i.e. the cost of ordering costs and holding costs combined. A business that is placing orders for any other quantity will incur a higher combined cost for CO and CH than is necessary. However, as also discussed, the model does not consider the potential existence of quantity discounts and will not consider this aspect where they do. Accordingly, where discounts are offered by suppliers, an amended approach is required. 1. Calculate the total inventory cost incurred, i.e. ordering, holding and purchase costs, if the economic order quantity is used. 2. Calculate the total inventory cost incurred, as defined above, at the minimum order quantity required to earn each level of discount. And 3. Choose the order quantity with the lowest total annual cost. For example, Imagine a company has calculated the EOQ as being 50 units. The supplier is willing to offer a 1% discount if 75 units are ordered, 2% if 150 are ordered, and 5% if 250 are ordered. The company would calculate the total cost based on order quantities of 50, 75, 150 and 250 units and then select the quantity with the lowest cost. Just in time. Just in time or JIT is a business philosophy built around excellent quality to provide the customer with what they want when they want it. This presentation is not going to discuss JIT in detail. However, central to a JIT approach is the principle of holding little or no inventory. This appears to be contrary to the EOQ model, as whilst holding costs will be very low, 
the company will need to place lots of orders for small quantities and will, as a consequence, incur high ordering costs. Supporters of JIT would refute this and would argue that the EOQ does not consider all of the costs associated with inventory. Specifically, they would suggest that companies hold inventory to cover up problems or weaknesses within the business. These problems will include unreliable suppliers, poor industrial relations, lack of or poor planning systems, poor quality work leading to rework or scrappage. All of these will make the coordination of material needs and supply extremely difficult and indeed the holding of inventories allows these inefficiencies to exist and to continue. All of these issues will damage the organisation and accordingly will represent a cost to the business that should be considered. Thank you.